Hello again everyone. This video explores some of the most interesting and unusual gravestones at Evergreen Cemetery in Lindock. Lindock is a tiny community located in the county of Norfolk, Ontario. It's a beautiful, picturesque spot I encourage anyone interested in a peaceful drive off the beaten path to visit. Evergreen Cemetery has many gravestones from the 1800s and is one of the most beautiful cemeteries I've ever visited. Sometimes you just have a sense about things. When pulling up to the front gate and seeing this sign, I knew I was in for something special. One of the most interesting things about this entrance is that, unlike most other cemeteries, you can't see any gravestones or the cemetery itself from here. This kind of first glimpse makes you curious. You wonder, what will I be seeing? Where is the actual cemetery? When you get beyond the gates, you can choose to either drive down the path or walk up a hill to get to the cemetery itself. I chose to walk, and this made the big reveal even more awesome. From the top of the hill you can see the cemetery itself, which sprawls across a piece of land which itself backs onto a stunning valley. You really get a feeling here like you've left Lindock and entered a different place. But enough about the walk there, let's talk about some old gravestones. One of the first I saw was for little Constance Valerie Fair. Constance died at just four years old in February 1932 from asphyxia caused by an enlarged thymus, part of the lymphatic system. Her gravestone, which would have been quite expensive, shows she was very loved. Standing atop the stone is an angel, and if we look closer we can see that it's scattering flower petals. This is sometimes interpreted as a heavenly blessing, but we can also read it as a symbol of human frailty and impermanence, since flowers have been used in both art and poetry throughout the ages to symbolize the short human lifespan. Nearby is another beautiful monument, this one for J. Paul Charlton, who died in 1894 at just 17 years old. His father was lumberman and politician William Andrew Charlton, and it's clear a lot of money was spent on this gravestone. This stone is also a wonderful example of when the stone's epitaph corresponds to the statue atop it. At the bottom we see a citation, a verse from the Bible, the book of Revelation. This verse comes from Revelation 21, 26. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. The it here refers to the New Jerusalem, and the next verse discusses those who are, quote, written into the Lamb's book of life the lamb here being Jesus. Looking at the top of the monument, we can now see what the meaning is. The deceased is being written into the Book of Life, and one day will enter into the New Jerusalem. Also inside the Charlton family plot is this statue in classical garb, surrounded by Greek Doric columns. This stone has inscriptions for other members of the Charlton family stretching across many decades. It's quite a sight, and you can see it even off in the distance immediately upon entering the cemetery. If we look closer, we can see that it's holding an inverted torch. This symbolizes the extinguishing of life. Sometimes you can see an angel holding an inverted torch, and I've often seen two inverted torches, one on each side of a gravestone, used as a sort of artistic framing. At the bottom is another biblical passage which says, These all died in faith. This passage is from Hebrews 11:13. The entire passage says, quote, "These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth." This passage is a statement about faith and trust in God, and contrasts eternal life with being pilgrims on the earth only here for a short time. Many epitaphs from 19th, 20th, and 21st century monuments are meant to convey to the reader the piety and faithfulness of the deceased and their family. This monument is certainly the most visually impressive in the entire cemetery. But gravestones don't have to be large and expensive to impress and convey a sense of sadness. This stone is for Selena Flood, a farmer who died in 1873 at just 53 years old from an ovarian tumor. As we've discussed in other videos, the symbol here represents the hand of God reaching down and breaking the chain, which can here be interpreted as her life being taken, the chain being broken. Usually this symbol is found on gravestones for those who died suddenly from disease or accidentally, but in this case it's possible that it was used because the cancer was aggressive and killed her quite quickly. 
Nearby is another sad stone for a teenager named Colburn Hall, a farmer's son who died in November 1891 at just 14 years old from heart failure following a fever. His stone has a lily above the inscription, which often symbolizes purity and resurrection, and at the bottom, his stone has a moving epitaph, quote, O brother, first to leave our band, life's song as yet unsung, while gray hairs gather on our brows, thou art forever young. Anyone who has ever lost a friend or family member who was still young can relate to the strange feeling that comes from thinking about how, as we get older, in our minds, they'll always be the age they were when they passed away. The next stone is another sad one for both Eliza Pratt and her sister May Victoria. Eliza died at just three years old in 1880 from cerebritis, a brain infection. I haven't yet found a death record for how her sister died. Their stone has on one side a wilted rose, and on the right side a flower still in bud, in both cases indicating a life cut short, or symbolically speaking, before full bloom. In between the two flowers are the words, Our Loved Ones. Gravestones like this seem to speak to us through time about the grief of their parents. Cemeteries are often places of reflection on life and death, the meaning of both, and what we do with our time on earth. Nearby to the Pratt stone is this family stone that says, quote, How far we travel in life matters far less than those we meet along the way. This quote is attributed to famous American author Mark Twain and is an example of how people often use gravestones as a way to express their own personal life philosophy. Just a short walk away is this stone for Emma Chrysler, a farmer who sadly died in 1881 at just 20 years old from consumption, which often meant what we now call tuberculosis. Her stone has a hand pointing to heaven, but what interested me most was the very stylized way the monument maker carved her surname. Occasionally one comes across these stones where the carver really wanted to make the name stand out and perhaps show off a little bit. Nearby is a stone for a man named Isaac Taylor, who died in 1904 at 58. I haven't been able to find out how yet, but I wanted to show you this one regardless because it's a great example of how sometimes we have to use our imagination to find out what the meaning of the symbol is. The clue to this one is right above the inscription. If you look, you can see rays shooting outward, which is meant to be what's called a half sunburst. This symbol plays on the long history of light being associated with the beginning, or in Christian theology, eternal life. Here we can read this symbol as meaning a hope in resurrection and eternal life. When discussing 19th century cemeteries, one of the topics people often find the most fascinating is the influence of the Gothic on gravestones. Many gravestones were designed to resemble things seen on ancient Gothic churches from Europe and Gothic revival churches in Canada. This stone, which commemorates members of the McKim family and Hannah Perry, is designed as what's called a pointed arch, or gothic arch. Inside of it we can see what's called a pointed trefoil arch, and then there are a cross and rows in the middle. If you take a moment and think about windows from cathedrals you may have seen in your travels, doesn't the shape resemble many of them? Pretty neat, isn't it? Looking for gothic influences in old cemeteries is one of my favorite activities when visiting them. There are many stones here we could look at, but in the interest of time, I wanted to conclude with this large stone for the Hellier family. It's in quite a nice spot of the cemetery, and if you look in the background, you can see the valley behind it. What a sight. This monument could be termed a rustic monument, which were somewhat popular, particularly in the late 19th century. Although it may seem strange to us now, since Canada's population was so small then, the country was undergoing massive changes as industrialization changed the way work and business were done. Like today, many people felt that old ways, however we wanted to find that, were disappearing as technology caused sweeping societal changes. These rustic monuments, among other things, were often a nod to the traditional rustic way of life, what we might call simpler times. The number of logs at the top, three, may be symbolic of the Trinity, since oftentimes the number three in old cemeteries was meant to express that. Well, that does it for this video about Evergreen Cemetery in Lindock, Norfolk County, Ontario. 
As always, I encourage anyone looking for an interesting trip back in time and a beautiful drive in a quiet rural place to visit both Lindock and Evergreen. The locals are kind, the spot is picturesque, and there are many amazing pieces of art to look at while you take a stroll in the cemetery. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like to ask once again that if you liked it to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends. Thanks very much for watching, and happy exploring.